God's voice in numbers. God's voice in numbers. Nine, three, zero. How many know what that means? Nine, three, zero. Been talking about it this morning, all morning. Nine, three, zero. How about 11? 11. <laughs> Let's not forget. Numbers mean a lot, folks. And God's voice will be spoken next week through the numbers 930, because if you're not here at 930, you ain't gonna hear it. But you'll get another chance at 11, okay? God's voice in numbers, we've been celebrating and talking a lot about our 20th anniversary, and numbers are significant in the voice of God. God uses weights, measures, and numbers and order to deliver his truth and his message to his people to bring glory to himself. When people get a hold of the numbers and the meaning of numbers, it brings greater definition, definition to the scripture. And when we can start understanding God better, he gets the glory. So this is what numbers is all about. I want to put a disclosure statement on this message. I am in no way a scholar on prophetic numbers of the Bible, but I do want to build up a case and a pile of evidence for what I'm going to talk about next week, because I'm going to be talking about the power of expectancy. I've been, I've been looking at this all year long and I just said, well, I'm not a scholar. I'm not a guy that can talk about numbers. I've never talked about numbers in church and never preached on it for 20 years, but I knew 20 was significant in the Bible. So I've been studying on it through this year and I'm like, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to get it done before our 20 year celebration in a couple of weeks. So the power of expectancy next week will follow up on this one. So the Bible is full of numbers. Matter of fact, there's a whole book in the Bible that is dedicated to numbers. It's named numbers. Everything in heaven is numbered. Everything in heaven is weighed. Everything in heaven is measured. Have you ever thought of that? But it says in Jeremiah 33, 22, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered. He just says everything's numbered in heaven. And now he's telling us the things that cannot be numbered. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured. So I will multiply the seed of David my servant. You know how sometimes people say, well, boy, there's not going to be many people going to God because of all the stuff that's going on in the earth and all the evil stuff. And Don't you ever speak that against God. Don't you ever take away from God's number that he is building in the earth. Don't you ever take away from what God is doing through people, through his church, through believers. He is always adding to that number. And I promise you, Every one of you, including me, have got it wrong. Because it's a number that no man can number, and he's always adding to it. I'm going to tell you, the church, is, the church has not had a rough go. The church is on the march. The devil has just woken up the church to understand what God is doing in the earth today. He's adding to his numbers, a number that cannot be numbered. Some things get counted, weighed, and measured, while others cannot be counted, weighed, or measured. Now, why does the scriptures do this? It's all for the purpose to bring glory to God. It's all for the purpose to bring glory to God. The guy's up back, going to have to really keep with me. Now, the Jewish people would read and study the Bible by the numbers that the Hebrew letters represent. Okay? They, we go by numbers. They actually go by letters. And their letters mean something as far, or, or represent numbers, while our numbers would represent 
letters. But I can promise you that if we study it from the Hebrew uh, point of view and the Jewish people point of view, we'll get a lot more meaning out of the word of God. This kind of in-depth study would multiply the significance of God's voice. Psalms 29, two through four, give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters and the glory and and the God of glory thunders and the Lord is over many waters. He's talking about his voice. His voice is in the sky. His voice is over many waters. He's saying his voice is coming from everywhere. And the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Now, I can tell you that definition right there, if we were to study every scripture in the Bible through that definition, we would have to find a whole lot more than what we read in the morning in just a couple of minutes, a couple of scriptures. We would have to get into an in-depth study because the word of God is so powerful. Psalms 29, you should read the whole chapter because it goes on to declare that it breaks, it skips, it shakes, it divides, it even, the, the last verse in there, I think it's the last verse, it even makes deer give birth to their little ones. Now, if God can do that with a deer, Don't you think he can do that with you? He cares about you a whole lot more than he cares about animals. And he loves the animals and he cares about the birds in the sky, but he tells us he cares about us a whole lot more. So if he can just speak and deer have babies, he can speak to you. So don't you listen to what the devil has said to you. Maybe you've gone some time and you haven't gotten pregnant, but you keep believing, you keep trusting because the voice of the Lord will come thundering down and and will speak a baby and there you will have exactly what God has always intended. But it is the voice of the Lord that makes it happen. But if you're speaking against the voice of the Lord, things don't happen. The only way you get God and what he wants to do in the earth and in you and in your marriage, I'm going to tell you, his seed may be no good, but his is okay. You don't even need him. (laughs) All you need is the voice of the Lord. He will speak and you will be with child. It's how it started out when, when, when he came to Mary, it was through the spirit. It was through the spirit. So you got to believe, you got to believe, you got to, you got to put your, your belief in the power of the voice of God. The voice of God is so much more than what we read. There's no end to how the voice of God will speak to us. It might be through a book that you're reading. It could be a podcast. It could be a Sunday massage. Oh, I'm supposed to say message. A Sunday message, maybe, maybe a massage. Sounds good, honey. Schedule me one. It may speak through your children, a field, out in the woods, out on the water, a drive down a country road, not Route 9, a drive down the country road. Route 9 is just awful to go, go on in the evening. It's, it's, it, it's just all backed up all the time. And, uh, and you're thinking of other things if you're caught in that traffic, probably saying things you shouldn't be saying. <clears throat> but you could use that time down that country road to hear the voice of the Lord. No matter which way you look, you just can't escape the constant voice of God. Now, if God starts speaking to you in numbers, whoa, if he starts speaking to you in numbers, you can't turn it off. I'm telling you, you cannot turn it off. You might be in a conversation with somebody about your birthday. Maybe you're uh, uh, 79 years old and you're just driving down the road. You're driving by the bank and you look up at the sign and it's, what is it? 79 degrees, right? And then you pay for a burger and fries at, at, uh, where are you going to get your burger and fries? 
Five guys, of course. The, the only problem with Five Guys, when you walk out, the first time I got a burger and fries at Five Guys, I was walking back out to my motorbike and the whole thing went through the bottom of the bag. Because you all know them fries are loaded up with grease and we should not be eating them. But boy, they are good. Oh, I, I want to get back to my message here. You pay for a burger and fries and you find out that it's $7.90. 79. You're driving down Route 11 and you look at your speed. 79 miles an hour. You better hear the voice of the Lord. Slow down. But do you know what I'm talking about? When you start hearing the voice of God through numbers, you can't turn it off. Why? Because everything in the word of God is brought into order. God says his Holy Spirit moves through order. How do we get order? By numbers by numbers. Numbers keeps the moving of the spirit in order. I'm going to be talking about that some next week about how we're going to be doing two services because these numbers, the times that we're going to do things and the, how we're going to bring our volunteers together and how we're going to get more, more of you to serve in our children's ministry. We need more people. You could come tonight. Tonight is, uh, is our crew night. That's at six o'clock. Come on out and be part of serving in our children's ministry because I'm going to tell you, it is going to be awesome for you because you'll be able to serve for about one hour and then you'll be able to transition and go into the other service. It's still only going to be about two and a half hours here and then you're off to lunch just as 12 o'clock arrives. There will be no excuse for serving God. Oh, it takes too long. No, we're going to keep things in order because I believe that it's in order that the Holy Spirit moves and the numbers and the times and the season in which we do it is very important. Where all that come from? <laughs> Everything speaks to the goodness of God. The word of God is always, listen to this, the word of God is always relational before it's functional. It's not really about the numbers. It's about relationship. Everything spoken to us through the word of God is about God wanting to have a relationship with his people. And so every time we see numbers and we find meaning in numbers, first think, how does this relate me to God or God to me? First, think about relational before you think functional. Because if you think functional, you could get sidetracked by some other meaning of the number and the outcome is not a relationship with God. The outcome is something that confuses you and God is not the author of confusion. So if you are confused by the numbers and what God is speaking in his word, it might be because you're not listening to the spirit. You're listening to the voice of this world and trying to adapt everything that the Bible says to the world. We're not to adapt the voice of God to the world, but the voice of God to the moving of the spirit in our lives. And then as he moves in our lives, we find out how that's functional to the word. But we understand first that the word of God is relational. I, he wants me to know. He wants me to understand what Nate was talking about, the wisdom. He wants us to have the wisdom because that's where he speaks. That's where he brings clarity. That's where he gives us his plans for good for us. And, and when he's doing all that and we see the purpose of the word, we get into a greater relationship with God. And then when we're in a greater relationship with God, our lives function better. Woo! They do. They function better. So the word of God is always relational before it's functional. If you start to study the meaning of biblical numbers, you will enter a whole new understanding of God's voice. I'm going to show you how. Understand this. There's no power in the numbers. The power is in the voice of God. All the numbers do is point to the voice. So we always have to ask this question, not what does the number mean? What is God saying to me? What is God saying to me? Because the enemy has a counterfeit for every number in the Bible, but he can't counterfeit the voice of God. He can't do that. God speaks all by himself. 
He does not need anyone else. When he comes into your room, when he begins to speak in your head and in your heart, or he begins to speak maybe through your children or your, or, or your spouse or at your work, I'm going to tell you, God stands all by himself and he speaks. But if you are looking for him to, if you are looking for just the message of the numbers and the meaning of the numbers, you might miss the voice of God. Everything speaks to the goodness of God if you look for it. Proverbs 3 and verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So we're always looking for a way to acknowledge God's voice in our life. And then when we do that in everything that we do, he directs our paths. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. What he's talking about there, relationship. If you're in good relationship with God, even the bad things will come out for your good. Even the bad things, even the difficult things, God will pour his goodness into the trials and tribulations that you go through in life. My wife, she is fascinated with numbers. And I'll give you the numbers she's fascinated with. Everybody in my family knows it's 1025. I mean, she's so fascinated with it, it's annoying. She sees 1025 everywhere. And it's not just the number, it's the time. It's 1025 time. I mean, she just sees it everywhere she goes. I mean, we, we could be walking down a sidewalk and she says, see that? And it's the house number of somebody, 1025. 1025, she sees it, it'd be on the sign, she sees it. It's 1025, it could be a hundred numbers on that billboard and she can only see 1025 or drive by. I didn't see it, oh, I saw it. She just notices it. I'm telling you, when God starts to speak to you, through numbers, you can't turn it off. God is trying to get something to you. God's been trying to get something to my wife for years. How long have you been fascinated with that number? Yeah, seven or eight years. The first year, it was kind of awesome. The last six, annoying. She look at the menu. Oh, that steak's ten dollars and twenty-five cents. Like, See that license plate? Ten twenty-five. The address of the building? Yeah, you know. But I've been impacted by that so much that in this year, when I'm starting to look at numbers, it's one of the first numbers that come to my head. Ten twenty-five. I don't know. Maybe God wants it for me, not even her. Maybe that's why she keeps mentioning it. But I've been impacted by it. So much so that I'm building a new airplane. I'm selling the one I got and I'm building a new airplane. I should have it done for a Christmas gift for myself. And, uh, and I'm hoping to have it done by then. It's the exact same kind of plane that I'm flying right now. And every airplane, you have to put an N number on it. And, it, and that N, which is identifies here in the U.S., is followed by a number. I was so impacted by it. I, you know, you can tell I've been impacted because not just annoyed, because if I was only annoyed by it, I wouldn't put it on my airplane. But I ended up putting it on my airplane. I'm like 1025. And then I added the letter B because you have to add one letter for Beth. So now it's 1025 Bravo. And you always, when you're talking to the air traffic controller, you always have to mention the last three numbers. So 25 Bravo. It just rolls off, off the tongue. 25 Bravo. But you know what? I know what it means now. Why? Because I went into the word of God for about three hours because I wanted to understand what 1025 meant. The number 10 is God's authority, God's completeness, and God's law. 10 commandments was given to live in harmony with God. See, it's relational. Commandments isn't to be judgmental. It's to be relational. God gives us 10 commandments so that we can live in harmony with God. The phrase God said is in the Bible uh, or, or is repeated 10 times through Genesis. So 10 represents the voice of new beginnings. 10 is a celebration of victory over evil. And hone in on that one because that's what it's all about because the day of atonement was on the 10th day 
of the month. And the Day of Atonement is a most important thing in your life and in my life. But there's a disobedience to the side of 10 as well. There were 10 generations before the flood that were wiped away because of their disobedience. 10 generations. There were 10 plagues upon the Egyptians for holding God's people captive. There is, these are just a few of the 242 times that God uses the number 10 significantly in the Bible. But none greater than the good side of 10 that it was the atonement for your sins and for mine that we can be free and one day live with Jesus in heaven. So the most significant meaning is a celebration of victory over evil because that's what happened on the day of atonement. Now the number 25, I'm gonna finish up with this. I got another whole message there. Even before I get to the one I wanted to speak next week. Now the number 25 in John 1 and 16, I want you to see it, You're you're all gonna find it. From Christ's fullness, we have all received grace upon grace, the atonement. You see it? 25. Y'all just looking at me like, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I had to look into it. I had to, I had to really look. From Christ's fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The number 25 symbolizes grace upon grace. Now, here it is. Five is the number of grace. And when it comes to the atonement of Christ, we can't really put any number on it. So he multiplies it by saying, when his atonement came for you and I, it wasn't just grace, it was grace multiplied. It was grace multiplied by grace. Grace is the number five. So it's five multiplied by five equals 25. So the atonement that sets us free, number 10, number 10, which is, which is his blood was shed on the cross of Calvary so that we can be free of our sins. We find out that it happens because of number 25, five times five, grace upon grace. Now, doesn't that scripture mean a whole lot more to you right now than what we just read at the beginning? This is absolutely amazing. Can you see how numbers bring this greater understanding to the voice of God. So Beth, I want to tell you the prophetic word of you seeing 1025 over and over again. 10, I can celebrate victory over evil. 25, because of God's grace upon grace. I can celebrate victory over evil because of grace upon grace. I can celebrate victory over evil because of grace upon grace. I can celebrate victory over evil because of grace upon grace. I want to tell you, grace is multiplied in your life. Your life is not about what you've done. Your life is not about the places you never should have gone. Your life is not about the mistakes and the things that you've you've done to disappoint yourself, maybe disappoint your marriage, your family. It's not what it's about. He wrote in his word that your life is about his son, his son dying on the cross, the atonement to give you grace upon grace. And you know what? When you come to Jesus, that's when the multiplication starts. Because you think, oh man, I got, I got to get it all right. People just got to get it all right when you come to Jesus. No, no. That's why he said, I'll give you grace upon grace. And when people stop talking about the grace of God in your life, I'll keep multiplying it. I'll keep, I'll keep coming back with the same message, the same love message, the same thing. I will keep caring for you. I'll keep loving you. It'll be grace upon grace. And I'll multiply my forgiveness and my blessing in your life. 1025. 